about four summers ago, I went to Six Flags with a group of friends and we were so excited we went straight to our favorite roller coaster. After waiting in a long line, we finally got to take our seats in the very front. We eagerly got our seat belts all buckled in and got our safety bars down and were ready to go. But that's when I looked behind me. One of my friends could not get his bar down. He tried and pulled and twisted and sucked in his stomach, but the bar wouldn't lock in. A ride operator came over and told him that he was too big to ride the ride. There are many factors we can point to driving the obesity epidemic in America, from genetics to exercise habits, but researchers insist that the root causes are changes in the food we eat and the way we eat it. We had just a change in dietary concept of foods. People started eating more, maybe exercising less, and as the years went on, food started being supersized. We definitely see things like type 2 diabetes on the rise, also cardiovascular impact on, on children, stroke, all, all sorts of different things. These overweight and obese kids, when you think about their typical diet, um, it's soft drinks, uh, fast foods, the vegetable of choice is a french fry. So in being in those schools and seeing what the kids brought from home, it was, it was eye-opening, really eye-opening. In order for us to make a consistent change with what's going to take place with the health of the U.S., I really believe where it really starts with small groups of people just working with small groups, we need to see that take place. The Alver Foundation, we decided to direct it toward prevention, prevention of childhood obesity. Unfortunately, now we need to stop the obesity. It's so important to combat child obesity because they're the next generation of adults and they're going to be teaching the next kids and so you have to, we have to teach them now because they're the ones that are going to be teaching people later. The Oliver Foundation and Recipe for Success are two Houston-based organizations that have been distinctly instrumental in the fight against childhood obesity. In 2005, we created Recipe for Success Foundation to change the way children eat and empower the community to provide healthier diets for children. Research has indicated that changing the culture of eating in America will require a multi-layered approach of innovation, education, and regulation. Because whether you're eating it or you're getting to share it with people, food is, is not only is it nutritious, but the community of being able to share food with other people and sit down with your family or friends is super valuable and I think cooking is a great way to be, bring people together. We need people to engage in behavioral change on an individual level. In my lunch, you know, I used to bring like unhealthy chips, like flaming hot chips or something like that. And um, I switched that out with like mini Pringle packs that have like less carbs and less fat in them. And like I bring carrots to lunch and yeah, wheat bread. So let's say you go out to dinner with your family. Do you ask for water or Coke? And let's say you go to a fast food restaurant with your friends. Do you get the french fries or the apple slices? And it's on a Saturday afternoon, you have five hours of time to kill. Do you spend that time watching mindless television? Or do you use some of that time to go outside and ride your bike or play with your neighbors or walk your dog? These are all really small steps toward the larger goal of eradicating childhood obesity. If we can have people that come up behind us that know some of the information that we know, as older people know, and then actually put some ingenuity behind it and come up with new solutions, come up with new ideas, come up with new programs, we need people to do that. And I do think that's going to require a younger generation. So. I want you to imagine a world without childhood obesity. Imagine a world where a child's weight no longer threatens their well-being for their body or their mind. Imagine a world where kids aren't called fat because fat is no longer a word that describes them. So I challenge you 
to imagine a world without childhood obesity. I challenge you to step outside the silent majority and advocate. Thank you.